It's been quite a while since we've seen an Honor phone here on C4 eTech, but let's change that today. This here is Honor's new Honor, and Honor 9X. It's got an all-screen display, a pop-up camera, and on paper, the specs all seem to add up for the price. So is the Honor 9X a phone worth your attention and more importantly, your money? That is what we are going to be finding out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 eTech and if you do end up liking what you see here, please go ahead, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get this review started. During our time with the 9X, there were quite a few features that stood out to us. The display obviously being the biggest one. So let's start right with that. Now this here is a 6.59 inch full view panel. That means no notches, no punch holes. It's just an uninterrupted full HD plus IPS LCD panel all the way. Even the bezels surrounding it are quite thin. Honor claims a screen to body ratio of over 90%. And even making room for some marketing uh, claims, this is one of the most attractive offerings in the segment, at least with regards to the display. Of course, it's not an AMOLED panel, so we did miss those inky blacks, but for an IPS panel, it did quite well. The colors were rich, the display can get really bright for easy sunlight legibility, and the viewing angles, excellent as expected. Amartya binge watched all three episodes of Dracula on the 9X, and he was pretty impressed. Talking about which, there is wide 1L1 support, so everything from Netflix to Amazon Prime can be streamed in HD quality. Now, while we are on the topic of watching movies and TV shows, the speaker here, that was a bit of a letdown. The bottom firing speaker doesn't get too loud. It's also quite easy to muffle depending on how you grip this phone. The sound through the headphone jack though, that was quite good, quite clean. Now, the second feature on our list no surprises here, it's that 16 megapixel selfie camera. The only way Honor could fit it into this full view display, uh, or rather fit it in along with this full view display, was to move the selfie camera to the top edge. The pop up mechanism works well and it never felt slow. Now, coming to the selfies themselves, they look well detailed, the colors are true to life, and even the background isn't blown out. We also have a portrait mode in here, and Honor has included uh, the options to customize the background bokeh. Honor is calling this 3D portrait lighting and it's a fun little feature. Now, the one downside of having this pop-up camera is that there is no support for face unlock on this phone. Honor seems to have disabled it. So the only means of biometric authentication is with the fingerprint scanner that's present at the back of this phone. It's fast, it's snappy, and it gets the job done. Talking about what's on the back, we also find these three cameras here. The primary, it's a 48 megapixel sensor and it's got good dynamic range. The colors are vivid. Zooming into the picture of the flowers here, we can see that there's quite a bit of detail. In this shot of the yellow and white flower, you can also notice the natural blurring of the background or the bokeh thanks to that f1.8 lens the sensor's paired with. Overall, good looking images on par with the rest of the competition out there. Under low light though, this camera does struggle. Even with the night mode on, the pictures come out looking soft with almost a watercolor effect to all of them. The second camera is an 8 megapixel ultra wide and it maintains the vibrant look and feel of the pictures. The detail levels and dynamic range are good for an ultra wide uh, for this segment. Finally, the last sensor in here, it's a 2 megapixel depth sensor and when it comes to edge deduction, uh, as for portraits, it's alright for the most part. The 3D lighting effects from the selfie camera, they return here too. Now moving on to videos, the Honor 9X, the resolution here, it tops out at 1080p at 60fps. However, there is a ton of focus hunting. The 60fps ensures the footage is smooth, but there is no stabilization. In comparison, 1080p 30, uh, it looks somewhat better uh, due to stabilization and we still have instances where the camera loses focus. The footage isn't that sharp either. Overall, videography is not the 9X's strong suit. Honor says that their 720p video comes with AI stabilization. And here's a sample. I'm going to let you guys be the judge. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Now, if I were to sum up the cameras on the 9X, I guess it's best described as par for the course. Uh, it does well in brightly lit conditions, but subpar low light performance combined with multiple issues while capturing video footage meant it failed to impress. Now, the next thing to catch our eye was MUI. Hey, that rhymed. I and you what? Oh, you know what? Coming back. Sorry for being distracted. Now, 
I didn't catch her attention because it did something out of the ordinary. In fact, this is just regular old MUI 9.1 running on top of Android 9 Pie, not even Android 10. Everything from Play Store to Google services like Maps and Gmail, they work just fine and that was the surprise here. Uh, initially, we went in thinking we might face some issues and I'm sure by this time all of you guys are well aware of the US trade ban and why we're being cut off from Google services. But when it comes to the 9X, everything worked perfectly fine since this phone was seemingly certified before the ban. Now, when it comes to features, MUI has a ton of gesture controls and handy modes like for example, the right mode, a one-handed mode and even a simple mode that makes all the icons bigger and larger and gives a much louder audible feedback every time you touch one of the, one of the icons. I imagine it's something that the elderly and visually challenged might find useful. As far as performance goes, well the chip inside the Honor 9X is the Kirin 710F and that's coupled with either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of onboard storage. We also have a hybrid SIM slot for memory expansion if you need it. And back to that Kirin 710F, I know some of you might be wondering what does the F at the end of the Kirin 710 stand? Is it something like the 730 and the 730G? Not really, the 710 and the 710F are basically the same chip. There are some minor architectural changes here, but at the end of the day, with regards to performance, they're basically the same. There is no performance upgrade with the newer chip. Now that said, when it comes to most daily tasks, it still holds up fine, but we did face some lag here and there while jumping between apps or when there were a few too many Chrome tabs open. When it comes to games, Surprisingly, the Mali G51 GPU inside the Kirin 710F, it held up quite well. Yes, there were the occasional lag spikes in resource intense games, but overall the performance here was much better than what I initially expected. I guess GPU Turbo 3.0 is doing its job pretty well. Now that being said, it's still quite some ways behind the competition like whatever Redmi or Realme are offering in this segment. For example, Redmi has that MediaTek Helio G90T toting Redmi Note 8 Pro. Realme has got that Snapdragon 712 toting. Well, they've got quite a few phones with Snapdragon 712. But hey, there are quite a lot of options in this segment uh, that do perform better with regards to GPU at least. Now moving on to the battery life, we have a 4000 mAh battery here and this turned out to be another surprise, but not in a good way this time. For some reason, the battery life on the 9X seemed to fall behind uh, other 4000 mAh battery devices that we've tested in the recent past. You guys saw that in our drain test as well, but in real life, we were barely making it through a day. At the end of most days where other phones in this segment would have 20-25% juice left, the 9X was on its last legs. As far as charging goes, we have an included 10 watt charger, so no support for fast charging either. Honestly, the battery life and the specs, they feel like a letdown for me. They just don't feel competitive enough by 2020 or even late 2019 standards. Okay, so before we wrap this one up, let's have a quick chat about the rest of the device. We have a gradient back design here. It looks nice, but it's not really unique. At 196 grams, the 9X is on the heavier side of things. And thanks to that 6.59 inch panel, we found ourselves using the phone with both hands most of the time. Overall, the build here is solid, but some corners have been cut. The entire body is made out of plastic. No Gorilla Glass for protection. At least nothing in particular is mentioned on the Honor side. As far as pricing goes, 14,000 rupees is what the 4 gig version of the Honor 9X comes in at. So for that price, it feels like a mixed bag. Now, if you really like the full screen display and the pop-up camera, then I guess you could kind of give this a shot. But if we take a look at the overall package that Honor's put together, then there are like I said earlier in this video, there are way too many phones in this segment that offer better value. The Redmi Note 8 Pro, the Realme 5 Pro, the Galaxy M30s, yes, just to name a few. There's nothing massively wrong with the 9X, it's just that early 2020, it feels the competition just has more to offer at this price point. And that's my two cents. So now I want to know what do you guys think? Do you like the Honor 9X? Would you consider going for it in this price point? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of this review, thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.